Welcome back to my top 100 board game countdown. Today we're doing 70 to 61. And so starting off for today, in the number 70 spot is Back to the Future, Back in Time. This game really is the Back to the Future movie in a box. Very cool. I mean, even the rule book comes as, a, as the Tales from Space. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, comic. And then of course we have the flux capacitor. The board is actually quite nice. Uh, you can see here the clock tower and the shops and it's broken into different sectors which you must move around the board. One of the cool things of the game is you have the picture of Marty's family. And there's uh, six different chunks on here and as this meter goes negative or whatever, uh, if it's not in the heart zone, you start losing pieces of the picture, all of the movie. And then the components in the game, very nice, lots of uh, really good cardstock tokens, etc. And then you've got the different characters to play, which are really cool. Ugh, if I can get this open. Ugh. All right, I can't get it open, but you can play uh, Einstein the dog, you can play Doc Brown, and then the miniatures themselves are actually really cool. You get this cool painted silver DeLorean, and then you get your little plastic characters that you play. And then you got these dice with, yes, the Biff face, and Biff is what you do not want to meet. And on and on, different opportunities, lots of different cool things. So this is actually really, really, and you're pressed for time to get the DeLorean back to the future. So that's my number 70, back to the future, back in time. Continuing on my countdown, we're getting to number 69 on my list all the way. We're going, of course, to number one, which will take a while. But right now, for number 69, it is Star Trek Expeditions. Yes, I really do like this game. And yes, they missed a golden opportunity to have 20 expansions for it. It's a hero clicks kind of game. Um, and you're trying to solve a mystery and get uh, the people of this planet, I forget the name of it, to join the Federation, etc, etc. Of course you have the Klingons there, who are annoying of this track at the top. Uh, and you have all these different sectors, which don't look too good until you put all the cards out on it. Uh, and basically the idea of the game is you have this track here between politics, rebels, and the ecology. And the farther up the track you get by the end of the game, uh, the better your score is. It tells you how you win. So you've got all these objectives to do. So ecology objectives, you start with one, then you go to the twos. And t they tell you where to go. They give you tests that you have to make. To, uh, so you need analysis, dilithium crystals, analyze the crystalline element. So on and on and on. There's a whole story here to do. Uh, and then you've got all these cool little encounters that can happen at the different things, uh, telling you which politics, where things are on the board. So these are randomly seated. Um, and then the characters you can play, of course, you've got yourself Spock, you've got Scott, you've got McCoy, Kirk, Sulu. These are the expansions, Sulu, Chekhov, and Yohura, I think are expansions, or maybe just Sulu, Chekhov, can't remember. Really cool. And then, of course, you have the cool Hero Clicks minis. So, on these, of course, you've got like your uh, command ability, uh, attack, and I forget what the blue, but anyway, really, really cool. So, the miniatures are really nice on the board, Spock. And of course, you have the ships. You have the Klingon um, battle cruiser that shows up to menace you. I mean, these are really, really nice. And of course, the Enterprise NCC 1701. All right, there you have it. This is a really cool game that you've got to try and uh, get the best score possible. So that's my number 69 on my list. And that will be Star Trek Expeditions. All right, coming in at my number 68 spot on my list is, oh, Temple of Elemental Evil. It's the D&D adventure. Uh, board game and wow is there a lot in this box uh, and I've got some extra stuff in here so of course you come with the adventure book you come with your uh, rule book and the adventure book is basically a series of adventures that you go through now the cool thing about Temple of Elemental Evil uh, as the first three which was Ravenloft, the Charlarn, and Legend of Drizzt if I'm saying that correctly uh, is this one lets you level up in between uh, campaign missions. So it's basically a big campaign. And as you can see here, I actually have the characters I was playing uh, online with all of their upgraded stuff with them. Uh, so that's what all this stuff is. It tells me what items and things they have. And yes, you've got lots of treasure cards. Just cards, cards, cards. And then of course it's a, uh, a game where you put the tiles together, they link together nicely, and you've got like just all kinds of stuff going on here. I do have the colored minis, 
uh, for the game as well. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but you know, basically it's uh, D and D in a box, <laughs> and it's one of the D and D adventure systems. But it's the first one that introduced the campaign, which is really cool. You can save your items and stuff from uh, one adventure to the next, go all the way through. I forget how many there's like nine or ten different adventures. So that's my number sixty-eight game on the list: Temple of Elemental Evil. And coming in number 67 on my list, another Star Trek game. It is Star Trek Frontiers. Now this is basically uh, Mage Knight in the Star Trek universe, it's in a nutshell. So if you know Mage Knight, then you will know this game. There are of course some differences, uh, but it is very, very similar to Mage Knight. And as you can see, there's a ton of stuff in here. You've got uh, dice, you've got your little modular hex. Uh, Boards with space stations and all kinds of things. It's basically a reskinning of Mage Knight, but there's more to it than just that. Of course, you have your little ships. You got the Enterprise uh, D there. You got, of course, the board cubes, which you'll eventually need to fight. And as you can see, there's four of them. <laughs> so yeah, and tons of tokens, tons of cards. Uh, I don't want to take these out of here. Of course, they're, they do different things. Uh, yeah, very, very, very cool uh, game. It is basically uh, you're going around the universe doing things as a la Mage Knight. You've got, of course, missions to complete. Now, I did the first playthrough of this on my channel where we had to just go scope out a sector. And you can see that on my channel as well. And then there are more and more and more. I should probably do another one soon. There's an expansion, the Re Return of Khan, which I do have as well, which gives you the old Enterprise, which is cool. So my number 67 on my list, and it's one to four players. I would suggest not four. <laughs> anyway, if you know Mage Knight, then you know that. My number 67, Star Trek Frontiers. All right, we're on to my number 66 game on my list, counting our way up to number one. And number 66 for me is Chaos in the Old World. Warhammer game. Ah, uh, this game. Wow, can I say, it's actually, it is so, so good. You're vying for victory points. And why do I have Conquest of Planet Earth in here? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> probably just storage issues. Uh, yeah, it's a very complicated game. It's an asymmetrical game. There are four different um, gods. I don't know the lore of the universe. And yes, I, mean, there's, I guess there's five gods because I do have the Horned Rat. Uh, expansion, tons of cards, super cool board. You've got all these events that can happen. Uh, basically, you're playing a demon type um, leader and you're trying to wipe out humanity pretty much and take over the entire world. Uh, and of course, tokens coming out the yin yang here. The board is so cool. Oh, if I can get this out of here, it's got these really neat dials, which give you, of course, so many points and then you get different uh, abilities and the board itself is actually really huge and very interesting. I'm going to try to peel this all open but you can see the different locations they give you different abilities and of course there's a uh, track around the outside for victory points and what you're trying to do is become the god that has the most victory points at the end of the game to win asymmetrical like I said so each of the different gods plays differently the different abilities and stuff that is my number 66 game on my list very very cool game Chaos in the Old World. And coming in at number 65 on my list of board games uh, that I really, really enjoy. And this is an oldie, but a goodie. And probably nostalgia, Arkham Horror, the board game for Monster Hunters. This is Arkham Horror First Edition. Uh, I had so much fun playing this back in the day. Yes, the components are not fantastic, but this was from 1987, what do you want? I did a playthrough of this not too long ago on my channel. Uh, it's a roll and move, and you've got different encounters that you come up with, uh, come up against. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. You're trying to close gates on this map. The map is actually pretty cool. Just fold out, kind of laminated plasticky kind of thing. Very, very fun game. Uh, you usually get crushed. I'm not going to tell you how it went on my playthrough. You can check that out if you want. So there you have it. Uh, I won't take all this stuff out of the baggie. So my number 65 game on my list is going to be Arkham Horror First Edition. 
And coming in at number 64 spot is another first edition game, and that's, oh god, if I can even lift it, oh, zombie side first edition. Uh, yes, and if you make the one rule change about the friendly fire, only if you miss, makes the game so much better. Yes, I do have the Toxic City Mall, I have the Prison <laughs> Outbreak, and the basic game, which means... Yes, there is uh, just an absolute never-ending mountain of uh, characters. So it's basically you're running around a map, you have an objective to complete based on whatever mission you're doing, you get to collect gear. You're going to be leveling up as you kill zombies, uh, and I've got like, with all the expansions, you get a whole pile of guys, the tiles. I'm not going to pull all this stuff out because I'm going to have a tough time getting it back in there. But yes, you have all kinds of your colored Zombie guys, tons of dice, tons of minis. Very, very fun zombie killer game, uh, which I'm going to have to do again. I did uh, one playthrough on my channel. I should do another one. It's a very fun game. I don't usually use noise tokens. All right, you probably know everything you need to know about Zombie Side. It's been out a long time. So that's my number 64 game on my list, and that's going to be Zombie Side First Edition. Making its way to number 63 on my list is, yes, another Dungeons & Dragons game. But it's maybe not the one you're thinking of. Because, oh, my 63 game is Conquest of Narath, a Dungeons & Dragons game. It's basically Risk a la Dungeons & Dragons. So you got your rule book. you got different factions that you can play. Oh, I just want to show you quickly map looks like I did a playthrough of this on my channel and there you go yes you've got Elven, Elven use and there's different minis for the different units you got little dragons for these guys you've got mounted warriors uh, there's a whole pile of event cards you got more dragons I think there's again very cool era elementals it's it's risk but it's it, but it's Dungeons and Dragons all right so uh, we kind of I'll just whoops of course that's upside down again there's a victory point track and it's a victory point game so you're trying to take over different locations you're trying to uh, defeat your enemies of course there's four different factions you can play a co-op two versus two or you can play everyone for themselves uh, and yeah it's a very cool it's, it is basically risk but you have cards as well so you have these event cards uh, so you can blockade, you can retreat, you can do primal surge, fey across, privateer fleet, and it tells you all these different uh, cool things you can do. And then the neat thing is there's dungeons in the game. And the dungeons you go into, where are the dungeon tokens? Oh, can't find them. They're in here somewhere. There are different dungeons along the board, and you have you can go in there and fight monsters. And what's cool is the different monsters roll different dice. The wimpy guys are rolling d6s, and then you get little stronger units roll d8s. And then you get other stronger units rolling d10s. Some of them roll d20s, like the dragons. And what happens is you need to hit, I forget, on like uh, a 6 plus, I think. So the high, more uh, the more dice you roll, or like a 12 side, you're going to roll a 6 plus more often than just the 6 sided. So well, that's my number 63 game, basically Risk in the Dungeons and Dragons world. Ugh, my number 63 game, Conquest of Narath. Number 62 on my list is a card game. I know, what a shocker, but it's maybe not the one you're thinking of. It's a tiny little game. Yep, it's Space Hulk Death Angel of the Card Game. Now this game is basically, it's basically just a card game, like it says. There's lots of cards. The rules are somewhat convoluted, but you'll figure them out pretty quick. I have done a playthrough of this, and there are, you've got different Marines. I think you go in from one to four Marines? One to six Marines. And your Marines have different abilities, like psionic attacks, and, you know, depending on which Marine you intimidation move and activate. So, you're going through different locations uh, through the old derelict ship, fighting the aliens. Uh, and of course, there's, you never know what's going to show up, alien-wise. And of course, there's the die that everyone hates. Hates! <laughs> so, uh, what are some locations? Uh, and we've got, like, the Void Lock. And it gives you special abilities and the things that uh, happen, and, and then you have aliens on either side. A little convoluted to try to explain how it works, but of course, this is the all-hated die. All hate the die. <laughs> anyway, you'll be rolling that quite a bit as you're fighting. All right, 
without explaining how everything works. Like I said, I've done a playthrough if you want to check that out. My number 62 on my list, and that is Space Hulk Death Angel, the card game. And the final game on my list, coming in at number 61, the last game we see today, and that is going to be Ruinbound 2nd Edition. No, I do not have 3rd Edition, nor have I played it, but I do really like me my Ruinbound 2nd Edition. I have the Sands of al -Kalim, I have the Winter Expansion as well, and I copied the Midnight Expansion to play it solo for as a kind of timer mechanism because uh, the game is two to six and so basically you have a big board uh, and you have different adventure cards on there you have shops you have items you can buy you've got different the green is the easier uh, encounters and then blue gets harder red are the hardest etc the outskirts um yeah lots of gold tokens lots of health and fatigue tokens so here are red adventure cards Here's the purple adventure cards, the yellow, and then of course the green. More and more tokens, and of course I have all of these expansions as well. The little expansions, I've got Beasts and Bandits. Uh, oh, I have the Seven Scions. Relics of Legend, Terrors of the Tomb, the Dark Forest. They all add more and more cards. The dice are really cool. You roll them and you can see which landscapes you can travel on. And you know what? The miniatures that come in the game are absolutely really detailed really cool uh, and they match the portraits of the characters in the game so you can actually find them oh there's just so much going on in this game and so things you can find you can get allies you can get items uh, more allies and suits of armor and chain mail and crown of staff of this and on and on and on there's a ton of stuff and then it just doesn't end. So these are all, of course, your enemies you're running into. Uh, really very fun. It is basically, it says on it, a family adventure board game. And that's exactly a fantasy adventure board game. I guess good for the family, too. All right, that is going to be ending off my list for today. And this comes in at the number 61 spot for me. And that's Ruinbound 2nd Edition.